Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're investigating the two-proportion z-test that can be used to determine whether a proportion of some outcome in one sample is statistically different from the same proportion outcome in another sample. And here we will investigate it on a very intuitive and uh, run-of-the-mill case. That is, we have got a statistics exam that has been undertaken by students in two campuses, and there are different numbers of students in both campuses, and there is a record of whether those students pass or fail the exam, denoted as P or F. And we need to determine whether one of the campuses did significantly better than the other campus to determine whether the uh, knowledge level of students in one campus is different to the other, maybe so that the program is adjusted accordingly, that some additional uh, training should be allocated to some of the campuses. So here we need to compare the pass rate. And obviously the pass rate is just the percentage of students in either campus that pass the exam. And here we can use some basic Excel functions to calculate those for the two samples and apply the logic of a two proportion Z test to determine whether the differences between uh, students' successes or students' pass rates uh, differ across the two campuses. So here we have got 63 students in the first campus and only 54 in the second campus. And that um, justifies the use of the uh, general formula for the two proportions that test that allows you to apply it to different sample sizes. So here we need first to calculate the pass rates across the two uh, campuses, across the two samples that we've got. So here we can simply use the count if function and count if the P's in this particular column. And we can see that out of 63 students, 54 uh, have passed the exam. And we can drag this formula across, and given the fact that um, Excel does disregard blanks when it applies most of its functions, we are good to go with that. So uh, out of 54 students in the second campus, 38 passed the exam. So let's translate it into the pass rate. So first we have to calculate the fails, just count if F's, in this particular column, and also impose the same formula onto the second column for students in the second sample or students learning in the second campus. And now we can calculate the subsample sizes, which are N1 for the first campus and N2 for the second campus, just summing up passes or fails, as students can only pass or fail the exam in this particular simple example. So we haven't got like absentees or deferrals, anything like that, so just pass or fail. It means that the uh, subsample size N1 is just passes plus fails. And the same is true for N2. Uh, passes plus fails gives us 63 and 54 respectively, which is equal to the number of students in both campuses. And now we can calculate pass rates, dividing the number of passes by the overall sample size, the total number of students who have attempted the test. And we have got uh, almost 86% of a pass rate in campus one. And uh, slightly an excess of 70% of a pass rate in campus 2. And now we need to compare those two proportions to determine whether the students in campus 1 did significantly better than students at campus 2. And to do that, we have to apply the two-proportion z-test. If we wanted to compare our pass rate to some uh, guideline or some regulation, for example, this test is advised to have a 75% pass rate, and so you have to uh, for example, tone the difficulty down if the pass rate is too low, or crank it, the difficulty up if the pass rate is too high, we could have used the one uh, proportion Z test we have investigated in one of the previous videos. However, here we're interested in differences not between an observed portion and some theoretical expected proportion, but between two observed proportions. So here we have to uh, aggregate the data we have got to calculate the Z statistic for the two proportion Z test. In the numerator, as usual, we have got the difference between the two proportions, so nothing different here. However, the denominator does change significantly. First of all, uh, as an uh, estimated probability, we used to estimate variance here in the denominator, we have got P bar, which is the uh, observed probability across both samples. So we need to calculate the aggregated pass rate 
across both campuses and then use that to calculate the variance to figure out how far away in terms of standard errors we are from the mean and then to adjust for the number of observations we have to multiply by this expression 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2 where n1 and n2 as mentioned before are the respective subsample sizes so number of students in both campuses so let's crack on with that let's calculate the total number of passes by just summing them up for both subsamples total number of fails summing those up analogously and calculate the total sample size which would be 92 plus 25 total passes plus total fails and calculate the sample proportion the sample pass rate across both campuses dividing the number of total passes by the overall sample size giving us around 79 percent aggregate pass rate and this aggregate pass rate this um, observed proportion across the, across both subsamples can be plugged in here to calculate the standard error for our two proportion z test so we have got everything we need to calculate the z stat as usual in the numerator we have got the difference between proportions and to express it in terms of standard errors we have to divide it by the square root of um, estimated uh, variance so here we impose the square root function then we refer to the aggregated uh, observed proportion times one minus aggregated observed proportion and then we have to adjust for the number of observations in both subsamples so we can just multiply it by one divided by the first subsample size plus one divided by the second subsample size and here we can treat it as a z stat this uh, distribution as asymptotically normal as we have got quite high uh, subsample sizes generally you can apply the asymptotically normal distribution if your sample size is higher than 30 that is a rule of thumb and here we do satisfy this rule of thumb so we can enforce this formula and get a z stat of roughly 2 which is um, statistically significant in, in terms of the critical value approximation you might remember a uh, statistically significant threshold of 1.93 isn't it but to make our results even more rigorous we can formally apply the two-tailed z test to get our p-value and then compare it to for example 10 percent or 5 percent or your preferred uh, confidence interval so here to apply a two-tailed z test and we apply a two-tailed test simply because we have got no presumption which of the campuses did better than the others so we allow deviations in any direction and as we have observed the deviation we now can uh, apply a two-tailed test to determine whether the deviation in this particular direction was significant so we apply two times one minus the standard normal distribution plug in the absolute value as a z stat over here and input one for the cumulative distribution function of the probability density function closing the parentheses enforcing the formula and getting a p-value of 4.35 percent which is quite low less than five percent and less than ten percent meaning that our difference between pass rates in two subsamples or differences in proportions between those two subsamples in a general case is significantly different at five percent and at ten percent however it's not significant enough to be significant at one percent but nevertheless, we can determine that uh, at 5% um, confidence interval, we have got statistically significant differences in success or in pass rates between students in the first campus and the second campus, students in the first campus doing significantly better than the second one. And obviously, two proportion Z tests are more flexible and can be applied to many types of data for example you can compare track records of different analysts or asset managers to determine whether one is doing significantly better than the other historically you can apply it to particular um, economic data to figure out whether a country or a company is doing better than uh, another country or another company and applications are numerous so a two proportion z test is a useful tool to have in your toolbox when analyzing some data Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I make to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics topics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.